Welcome to the Fort Johnson podcast, where we bring you the latest and greatest from Fort Johnson and beyond. This week, we have a special episode featuring the Army recruiters out of DeRitter. Join us as we dive into the numerous opportunities available from joining the Army, the promotion potential that comes with referring new recruits, and the unique perks of being a recruiter. Whether you're considering a career in the military or just curious about the recruitment process, this episode is packed with value, valuable insights you won't want to miss. So stay tuned and let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching our podcast, I am your host, Jeff England, and we are in the Fort Johnson Podcast Studio. Today, we have with us two very special guests. We have Sergeant James Rowe, well, Sergeant First Class James Rowe, (laughs) I don't want to demote you, and uh, he's the (laughs) Station Commander of DeRitter, uh, the DeRitter Recruiting Office, and next to him, we've got Staff Sergeant Zach Cepeda, and he is an official recruiter uh, because uh, they wouldn't let me bring in any of the uh, um, the unofficial recruiters. So. <laughs> correct. <it's> correct. <laughs> so, hey, man, how are you guys doing? I'm so glad you were able to make it in. Oh, we appreciate it. We great. appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah I heard definitely. you guys had some uh, some massive training uh, down in Lafayette, huh? Yeah, it was uh, your analysis. <laughs> <laughs> did you study for it? That, that's the whole thing. <laughs> we did. We did. All two hours of driving down. Yeah. Yeah. So that is great. Um, I mean, it is. It's one of those things that you just got to do. You know, for I mean, sure. It's, you're going to sure. do it everywhere they, everywhere you go nowadays, and uh, it's uh, you got to stay professional. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so, uh, how when you're down in your Deritter uh, office, uh, I know people can just uh, stop in and say, "Hey, what's up?" and "Hua Hua" and all that stuff, but uh, um, when when would be the best times to catch you down in uh, in your special office down there in Deritter? Yeah, so our office hours are, are going to be Monday through Friday. Uh, we're typically there around uh, 9 a.m. And, and usually uh, we, we stay office open until about 1800, uh, 6 o'clock. Um, and any time, to be honest, to come through, um, ask any questions. Um, yeah, definitely. So uh, now... For people that are already in, they already know all the recruiting stuff and and everything that goes on. Uh, But for those that are watching and for those that are just catching the one minute clips that we put out, um, how long, what on average, how long does it take for from beginning from somebody coming in saying, I want to join to the time they ship off to basic training? Uh, How long is the average time that we uh, that we do that? Because it took me over six months to get in yeah so uh the days of coming in and, and, and being two weeks and being able to talk to a recruiter and then look at you know joining the army is, is kind of gone uh there, there's a lot of different processes we have to do now um i would say the average time is about two months two months that's um, that's better than what i did yeah so yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's a it's about that time frame uh you know obviously with the testing and then going through the physical things of that nature um it, it used to be a lot like two months and uh, the first thing, well, uh, let's walk through uh, just to make sure that everything's uh, proper. Uh, there are certain steps that you have to do before you can put your hand up and say, I do. And uh, the first thing to do is to figure out what jobs you're qualified for. Um, so we take the uh, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, or the ASVAB, uh, and that is a, uh, a multiple choice test. Uh, when I first took it, I hate to say this, but when I first took it, took it, it was uh, with a number two pencil. Okay. And it, it, we did it in high school, and we, we did changed it. things a little bit. Just since. a little. Just bit. a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so uh, why don't we go through the steps of everything that we have to do uh, to get to the hand up and um, no no turning back? Yeah. So the first thing we'd start with is uh, come in and take an ASVAB. So <clears throat> with the ASVAB, um, we usually start um, when they come in the office, uh, we'll put them on a practice test. Uh-huh. Um, it usually takes about 20, 30 minutes. Um, it goes over two math sections and two English sections, which are the most important parts of the ASVAB. Essentially, the higher you score on those opens up your job opportunities. Now, the minimum passing is a 31 on the ASVAB, but we do have a program now that's been out for a couple years uh, it's called the Future Soldier Prep Course. Um, they enlist as what is called an 09 Mike. If they have a 16 to a 30 on the ASVAB, they still are eligible to join, and they'll go to either Fort Jackson, South Carolina, or Fort Moore, Georgia, formerly known as Fort Benning. 
and they'll do that future soldier prep course up to 90 days and it's basically like the in-service members do the fast class every three weeks they'll retake um the equivalent of the ASVAB that in-service members take and then once they have that passing score they will sit down with a guidance counselor and pick their jobs based off of what's available and what they qualified for so you, at least uh, they're actually getting the choices saying hey uh here's what's available mm -hmm. here's what you're qualified for uh which top three would you like is it kind of like that so it's the army offers the guaranteed job of choice so if they qualify to be a black hawk mechanic the job was there and that's what they wanted to do and that's what they picked that's their job first come first serve right, <laughs> yep. right. yeah it, it's it's based on uh, i always like tell people you know it's based on what we qualify for and what's available there's there's two distinctions there and what you qualify for is based on those scores based on all the MOSs the Army has, and then we have to look at availability based on what the Army needs are. And that's where we kind of try to find that happy medium with our applicants. So what are uh, some of the, in your, like, I'm sure you know what's going on with uh, job openings and stuff. What are the, uh, the, the biggest opportunities for people to uh, get into? What career fields are, or MOSs uh, in uh, military occupational specialty? Yes. Now look yeah. at me with my, all of my Yeah, acronyms. you're getting it. You're getting it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think what we typically see is a lot of our medical is a big driving factor. That's um, a so good career field to get into it because is. not only do you, um, not only is it good in the military, but if you choose not to make a career of the military, you can pretty much slide right into another right. job in right. in there. Right, and I think that's it's what's important, um, you know, with our station and, and how we typically operate. When we're talking to our applicants, we're usually um, kind of career progressing our career conversation with them, explaining to them, you know. This might be something you love to do for 20 years. And this also might be something that you do for four years. But we want to get a career field where they have that civilian, um, you know, potential and that experience. So uh, we see a lot of medical, I would say. And I, I think, you know, the second field, uh, and I'm not going to go specifics, but I would say the, the second field would probably be our IT would probably be a really big one. Oh, that, um, that would be a big one. Right. Like, you know, you know <clears throat> looking at cybersecurity and type of things like the, those types of uh, jobs within the IT field. Now the uh, now the big problem that I came into when I joined, uh, you recruit for enlisted positions. That would be E one through E nine jobs. Um, and of course, when you go in, you're going to start. You're going to start at the bottom and work your way up. And then when you retire, more than likely you'll be a an E seven through an E nine, mm -hmm. hopefully, and an E six, at least. Correct. At least, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. At least when it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you do not. You personally, your office does not recruit for officers. Uh, do you know how that goes about? Uh, if somebody is um, got an education, mm -hmm. got or got a college education, or is most of the way through their college education, do you? If they came in and said, "I'd like to be an officer," uh, would you? Would you send them to or? where it goes yeah so we actually do officers oh um, you actually we do yeah so it's on that civilian path though um if it's someone that is already serving currently serving in the army or at arms or, or at one of our, our sister branches then uh we would have to send them to their career counselors um however for us civilians coming into our office wanting to go into the like you know be an officer with that education uh, we do process them oh that's so cool because yeah. uh mine said no <laughs> and okay. I, was, I was within one year of being a batch or getting a get bachelor's degree, and they say, "Oh, we uh, we don't recruit for uh, officers. Uh, that they do that a different way." And he gave me no information, no nothing, and and suckered me into being in the wrong career field. <laughs> <laughs> so if okay, so let's say everything goes right and right. we get into a job, um, and it turns out it's not a good fit, like me in my first career field. Uh, what would what would somebody do? Would they just get out after four years? Which I do not recommend. <laughs> do not get the grass is greener syndrome. Stay in. Twenty years goes by faster than you would imagine. But what would you recommend uh, for somebody that did come in and they just happen to get into a career and it's like, eh, it's not really for me. Right. But I don't want to get out. They do have the option to reclass. Um, won't talk too much about like what but they can go into because that's more for the career counselors to handle but yeah that wouldn't if be they don't guys. like the job that they initially picked um they can 
have that option of reclassing to a completely different MOS. So it's not, it's nothing that you have to really worry too much about. Um, give it a chance, and then and then there's other paths mm -hmm. that uh, the recruiter, since you've already been recruited, right. you don't have to worry about. Yeah, there's, you know, it, it's inter interesting because there's so many pathways that the Army really has. Um, you know, for those, those enlisted service members that are out there in the Army, you know, if they're not necessarily happy with that profession or that MOS they're currently doing, uh, there's multiple ways and avenues. Uh, you know, we have the warrant officer program. Uh, we have the green and gold program. Um, that obviously they would go through their career counselor. They can change their MOS, or quite simply, they they actually could be looking at coming out into recruiting. And um, and for that matter, you know that that's a, a little bit of a different side of the army coming out to the recruiting command. So uh, there's that ability uh, um, for them to kind of take control and, and change things a little bit. So how different is it to be a recruiter? I mean, <clears throat> when you're when you're like infantry or airborne, you've got specific uh, installations that you can go to, like uh, just like in any military. Right. If the job's not at that <clears throat> installation, you can't you can't get stationed right, at that right, installation. Right. But uh, recruiters aren't even you're not even stationed at Fort Johnson. No, you're no. you're like the next town down. Or, right. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's it's unique. It really is because you are actually out there in that civilian uh, civilian population. Um, so you know we have you know hundreds of recruiting stations across the country. Um, I was actually able to be stationed in my hometown of Charleston, South Carolina, which is really unique uh, because you know we don't have really an army base out that way, uh, with the exception of Fort Jackson. So um, you know it's really unique that you get to kind of go out there, be a United States Army soldier, and um, you know, be in a completely different area um, where there may not be many soldiers out there, um, but you're still serving. Now, the uh, around here, I mean, where this is pretty much a uh, a military town and military area, and of course, Louisiana is very military oriented, and and we love our military. Uh, have you had uh, have you had uh, opportunities where? where you go to the high schools or you go or you have people that you come in contact with or you're out in a, a fairground or anything like that, that they don't know a lot about the military and they're genuinely interested. And it's like, well, I hear these and I hear those and uh, all the rumors and stuff. Do you have to just are are people are you finding more people are educated towards the military or are you still finding that there are people with miscon misconceptions about it? Uh, it's kind of like a mixture of both, um, depending on the area that you're in. If it's like a more of a small town, they kind of go off of probably what their parents or families told them about the military. Um, but obviously around here in Fort Johnson, you know, Leesville High School, that's plenty of uh, soldiers, kids that go there. So their families in the military, they know a lot about it, but they don't know <clears throat> too much. Um, they just kind of get the gist of like, you know, they get college benefits, um, they get to pick a job, and then for the most part, that's kind of where their educated level is on the military, or the Army specifically. Now, when it when it comes to uh, qualifying to join the air, uh, the military, the Army, um, uh, in addition to the ASVAB, is there a, a minimum education? Uh, do you have to have a high school diploma or um, – yeah, is so, a college, uh, a GED, or, right. or is, what's what's the minimum? Yeah, so adding to that point that he was, we were just talking about the education level as far as uh, the knowledge that we see. One of the, the one things I want to add to that as well is like, you know, oftentimes recruiters were, were really challenging against the you know, social media and things like that, right? There's a lot of stuff that gets put out there. Oh yeah, uh, TikTok. <laughs> Everyone likes to share, share their army story, uh, whether it be uh, positive or maybe not so positive, and oftentimes. Uh, that's the information that they may get. So, you know, I just challenge individuals that are looking to join the United States Army uh, to look at getting their information from a source. It's kind of like that English teacher, right? We go, you know, you have to cite your source, right? And, and make sure it's valid. So, um, you know, getting some information off the internet could be great, but I always encourage them to, to come in and at least get some information from the recruiter. I think it's important, you know, so that way we at least know we're getting uh, like really verified good information. Uh, so I just wanted to hit on that point because that's one thing that we often see a lot, you know, some TikTok viral, you know, and yeah. all of a sudden we're, we're answering for that. And uh, we, we see that a lot in schools. But um, to, to answer the education part, yeah, so we do have the ability to uh, enlist individuals that do have a GD um, as well, uh, and, you know, a high school diploma. Uh, there are some uh, certain requirements for some individuals that have a GD. 
um, uh, as far as like the ASVAB requirement. Um, you know, we kind of briefly talked about the, the test score. Um, you know, we have a program that goes from 16 to 30, um, but for GD candidates, they'll have to be above a 31. Um, so that's uh, that's yeah, that whole ASVAB score thing. I, every branch scores them differently. Right. Or they all have different scores because the Air Force has uh, four or four. five, yes. four, four scores, <clears throat> and the top score is 99. Right. And uh, then the Army has like a million and three yeah. uh, different scores. <laughs> it's like, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of line scores. Um, and, you know, the overall AFQT score goes up to 99, but we do have a lot of line scores. It just kind of helps us identify that placement or, you know, the availability in, in qualifying that individual. And if you got the basic, uh, the basic, uh, aptitude to uh, aptitude there it is yep to get the job <laughs> yeah you, right. you don't want you don't want somebody going in so not knowing the difference between a quarter inch uh bolt and a, a 10 millimeter bolt right 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 <laughs> exactly so what would you say uh you've had or what is your original mos before a recruiter because i know you didn't come in as a recruiter right yeah so i was infantry uh, i did infantry for just about maybe over 12 years and then i've been out in recruiting command for about six years now nice <clears throat> same for me infantry uh just shy of 10 years before i got the good old email for to be a recruiter so so if okay now the people that want to join i mean there are people that uh they're looking at joining they just don't know what a branch to to join um and when i think about it i think if you want to see all the uh the beaches and uh the oceans of the world then join the navy if you if you want to join uh or if you want to see a lot of uh cement and uh be in comfort join the air force and <laughs> if you want to see the world join the army would, right. would you and if you want to and if you want to be driven around by the navy join the marines <laughs> <laughs> so what uh what would you say uh what would you say to people that are trying to decide which branch to join why why would why should they join the army so elevator pitch go army Go Army. Uh, Beat and, Navy. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and I will tell you uh, for, for one uh, big reason, uh, you know, we are the, the largest branch in the military. So oftentimes, uh, most individuals that come into our office, they're wanting a career field. And there are certain career fields they have in mind. I, I always kind of alluded to the, you know, the idea of if you're looking at a career field and you're wanting to get this career field, uh, am I going to go to a, a small business and put my application in? To try to get that job, or am I going to go to a large, larger organization, right? Because the, the availability is probably going to be in that larger organization. Uh, so I, I always try to explain that to individuals um, because we do have a lot of jobs and we have a lot of availability in those jobs. So um, that's that's what I would say. Elevator pitch right off the bat for the, you know going army um, is just just that ability. Um, oftentimes we break everything else down to just you know a lot of incentives. You know I call it the recruiting row. Uh, you know, you got the Air Force, the Navy, and, and all these other branches. And we do challenge our applicants to to get that information from other branches um, so that way they're making the best informed decision. But ultimately, most of the things that we see um, incentive-wise are going to be like DOD. So it's across the board, right? You know, yeah. No one's getting paid more. No. Uh, you know what I mean? Like everyone's getting health care, right? But, you know, we can snazz it up like, hey, you get free health care. Uh, but I, I kind of challenge my guys to explain to them, like, what's important. The, the career is important, right? Getting those jobs that they're wanting to be in. Um, and then education is a huge part that we offer paying for education. And then sometimes not all branches will do that. So now I can tell you this much. Um, <clears throat> every branch that you join, well, no, not every branch, but um, Army and the Air Force, uh, you will learn how to to mop floors. <laughs> not in the Navy. You learn how to swab decks. Over there. Okay. I, yeah. Actually, did not did, didn't know. That, but yeah. I knew but, the Army, of course. But yeah. Now the um now for those that have I mean the best way to advertise um and to talk up the service of your choice is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And the best people to do that are the people that are already in. Now if somebody is you know let's say a private or specialist, maybe um, uh, an E-5 sergeant uh, is, you know, they're happy. They've got some friends back home. Uh, they just left. Uh, they left some friends behind. And now their their friends are struggling, trying to find their way, trying to get something like that. If they can talk their friends up, you know, and, and inform them enough to where they get excited about joining the Army, um, what opportunities do they have uh, to help get their their friends to join, right? Yes, yeah, so I think we'll both kind of you know kind of hit on this one. 
um, is you know, strike CG. It's a big initiative. Is the re, the soldier referral program? Uh, it's it's a great program that you know we kind of kicked off. I want to say about two years ago. Um, and don't quote me on that one. But uh, within that program, we we have our service members from uh, essentially E1 to E3. Uh, if they have the ability to refer an app uh, to a potential applicant, if they that applicant enlists, um, they have the ability to get promotion as well as a uh, ribbon um, for, for their, you know, their chest, their, their, their um, rack. Yeah. We um, call them, we call them um, salads. Okay. <laughs> salads. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then for our E4 and E5, they have the ability to get promotion points um, as well as a, a ribbon. Um, so, you know, great. It's a great tool. It really is. Um, and it allows our service members to tell their army story to, um, to our potential applicants and, um, yeah, I mean, you know, basically, I, I challenge our service members because, you know, oftentimes we, we might hear, you know, like, oh, well, you know, we could always use that one more uh, supply sergeant or something. Well, uh, I call it like, you know, building my fire team. Well, we'll build your fire team. You know, uh, our service members out there right now have the ability to uh, affect change on the Army by <clears throat> referring someone. I heard about something like that on the unit. Uh uh, where they go in, they they recruit the they go they insert themselves into the foreign countries and, mm -hmm. and they secretly recruit all the the locals to help them out. Uh, uh, force multiply, force, force multiplier. multipliers. Yep. There it is. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So, so uh, you know, and that's why I challenge our, our service members out there to do um, is you know you know be that change and, and and be that ability to to grow our army. So um, the referral programs, it's great. It's a great tool. It is. Yep. And <laughs> yeah, do you want to add on that? Uh, you kind of. I mean, it's also good for um, the spouses, right? Um, like here on Fort Johnson, a lot of the spouses have been coming in um, and referring their spouses. Um, typically, the spouses are looking at the reserves, so it's just part time that one week in a month. Um, yeah, just don't just if you're going to join the National Guard, uh, you're going to be activated a lot more often than the reserves uh, for especially around here for uh, hurricanes and yeah. floods and yeah. storms and stuff. But uh, I, you also get to be in the reserves and to be in uh, the active duty. You said um, education benefits. Yeah. So um, that's that's I think me is a, the biggest driving factor and in, in my personally, um, you know, education costs are probably never going to go down, right? They're probably going to always continue to increase. And um, what I will tell you is uh, I, that's one of the big things that we see around here is the the ability for the military or the Army to, to pay for school. Uh, I myself, I have two bachelor's degrees, and I'm currently working on my master's degree right now, and the Army's paid for that. Uh, so, you know, I'm a walking uh, kind of billboard for that, um, just the ability to have a career, get that experience, but also not have student loan debt. Uh, while getting my education. Yeah, that is kind of nice. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. And working towards retirement too. So there's uh, there's a lot of things out there. But for for this area specifically, I, I would definitely say that the I think uh, education benefits are huge. It is. Now the uh, what what do you have your uh, your bachelor's in? Or so I, what, no, and let's start with your master's, and then we'll work down. Yeah. So there. <laughs> I'm, I actually just uh, started. So it's in uh, cybersecurity management. Um, so I do have a bachelor's in cybersecurity and then a bachelor's in business management. So I guess I won't be able to hack into your computer system down in your office, huh? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> at least, at least my S6 definitely won't allow that as well too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. now, uh, what's, now, okay. So you, GED high school diploma, um, to get in as a enlisted was, is there, what special, um, requirements are to become an, a warrant officer because uh that's probably the least i know is is warrant officer because we don't have any in the air force right uh so you have i know the helicopter pilots mm -hmm. and um and um uh we've got administration and and they're specialists mm -hmm. in their own career field um a lot of people don't know what a warrant officer is it's kind of like in between officer and enlisted uh and there's only like five five ranks i think yes uh, yes cw1 through five uh, uh or w1 through cw05 so correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what is it, is there anything special that you have to do to become a warrant officer because i know okay enlisted is high school and uh officer is a bachelor's degree minimum correct and then to get higher ranks you get more education right, and stuff right. like that but what's it what's for a warrant officer so i'll i'll kind of briefly touch on this yeah so for 
our civilians entry level, uh, you know, entry level for one officer, we do have a program for, uh, you know, we, we used to call it the high school to flight school. Um, but we do have, oh, that'd you know, be for, so cool for, for aviation. Um, and oftentimes those are boards that we hold, um, you know, to kind of determine eligibility. Right. So, uh, we do have that program for warrant officer for those other branches in the warrant officer though. Um, typically, you know, warrant officers are those subject matter experts. They're specialized in that field. So those individuals would come within the active duty program or reserves. Right. Um, so for industry level, uh, we would have that, the aviation, but for, for the other branches, uh, it would probably more likely come from within those already serving. So for aviation, I would imagine that uh, in addition to the ASVAB, you have to take flight uh, flight test or a pilot. or Yes, a, we have uh, the SIF test. Yeah, yes, SIF. we do. Yeah, and it's like an instrumental uh, paneling test uh, or instrument flight test. Um, but it uh, it kind of just, I guess, determines the uh, applicant's ability to understand, like, uh, maneuvering an aircraft. Yeah, and spatial acuity and, right, and all right. that. Right, right. Things yeah. way above what I would, I would have any clue <laughs> on, to be quite honest with you. So, yeah, but it's the, worth it. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, of course. And then for the ASVAB, they just have to have a 110 GT score. 110, and that's general? Te technical. Ge mm -hmm. General technical. Mm -hmm. See, I, we had, uh, I, I can't even remember it. It was quite a while ago <laughs> but i know i did good right and there are books out there to uh study for the asvab because uh I, like they said uh like you said uh the higher the score the more you're qualified for and if you ace the thing there you can you can pretty much write your ticket to whichever career field is open right at the time yeah officially you know army and USREC stands behind uh the march to success program so it's a uh, march to success.com um, and they can go on there and um, you know free applicants can can uh, uh, create a, uh, a profile or an account and then utilize that to study for the ASVAB uh, other than that we're really officially not able to to, to discuss any other books or anything like that uh, applicants can obviously find other uh, other tools but the uh, the army officially uh, march to success is what we push to our applicants nice nice and that and, and it's free Right, yeah, exactly. So, which yeah. is a lot better than having to go out and buy a book or buy a program Correct. and stuff like Correct. that. But, uh, but study, uh, which, however you choose, uh, <laughs> right. study for the test. <laughs> right. uh, I, I try telling my, my stepson that um, that uh, it is not just a, a general uh you know, wow. common sense yeah. kind of test. No, there are actual yeah. questions in there. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be challenging, it's, and especially in the math. I mean, it's these math questions, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, like, uh, it's a perishable skill. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know how many times I do algebra when we're looking at like, you know, balancing a budget or anything. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's just it, one of those things. It's hard to do. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to make so, sure that you you forecast a budget and then match that budget. It's almost right. impossible. So there's there's there can be some challenge there for sure. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. The um, now overall, what would you say uh, is if you were able to speak directly to somebody that is looking for a job? Uh, is looking for a job, <laughs> but doesn't really have direction. And how would you how would you approach to them and say, you know, there's more than just working at McDonald's? Right. Yeah, I, th I think the unique unique thing about the United States Army, and when we look at the enlistment, um, is you have the ability to essentially take a test and then pick a career, and then we're going to train you, and we're going to pay you. And we're going to take care of those needs, right? We're going to take care of the health care, the dental, the food, the housing, right? Um, but we're going to train you, and then you're going to have that on-the-job experience. And then you're going to be a veteran uh, coming away from that. So I, that's what I, I often kind of tell our applicants is, you know, find a career field, so, something that you're interested in, something you'd be passionate about is the most thing. I think it's important that we put our soldiers in passionate jobs because that's what's going to keep um, our job, you know, our soldiers in boots longer, right? Our, and we're going to retain those soldiers longer. So the days of just like, hey, let's uh, put them in this MOS, you know, just, hey, man, you know, just get it. Uh, you know, I really challenge my team. Um, we're going to make that what the Army needs and what that, uh, that applicant wants. We're going to make that goal happen. Um, yeah, match it up. Right, because that retain exactly. is going to help us in the long run. That's what I've always said. A, right. a, a happy worker doesn't leave. Of course, of course, right. And, and you're changing what we kind of alluded to earlier with these TikTok videos and all these videos that can be out there, right, that can be, you know. We're, we're changing that, you know, and we have that. We can change and adjust that culture going forward. So that's that's what I tell those applicants is it's a unique thing. I think it's, you're, you're gonna, it's going to be difficult to find a Fortune 500 company where I walk in and say, hey, I want you to train me on this career 
Exactly. I don't have any experience. I have zero experience. That's what I, you know, that's one of the TikToks and in videos that I'm seeing is right. all these college graduates are sitting there going like, I got my degree. Right. I can't get a job. Uh, yeah. Everybody wants, everybody wants experience, but how am I supposed to get experience if I can't get the job? You know, I went through the same thing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and this is what we talk to our seniors about all the time. We actually do a, a lot around the area. So for, for those out there, uh, we, you know, we might have actually potentially talked to uh, you know, your, your, your child, we talk about student loans. We talk about experience. Uh, you know, how do we get all these things for that rising, uh, you know, college student, you know, um, you know, in great way is the United States army going to the reserves. I think it's great. You're going to get experience while also doing full-time school and getting your college paid for. So there's a lot of things, you know, there really is. But, um, yeah, I, I think the biggest takeaway is being able to pick that career and get trained. Absolutely. And just, Make something, you know, uh, well, want more, go forward, you know, um, be all you can be. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You got you got me sold. And um, <laughs> it's, it's all right. See, you got me sold. How would I uh, how would I find uh, a recruiter? How would I find one of you guys? I mean, I know that you're in Deritter. Right. And I drive past your office all the time. But right. uh, if somebody's not from around Fort mm -hmm. Johnson area or if somebody's uh, looking for a recruiter, they can stop in to, if they see one, they can stop in and say, hi, what's up, and all that stuff. Uh, what, how, would, how would they find it? Is there a website, uh, phone numbers, anything? Yeah, so if they just Google, like, Army Recruiting Center or Armed Forces Career Center, uh, they could, it should pop up for the local area, but our address is also 1018 North Pine Street. As and well as if they're not in the area, they can also go to goarmy.com, and there's an, uh, a way for them to just fill out their information. Uh, you know, first and name, then somebody last name. will. Yes, and we will, we will <clears throat> contact you. And, so, and uh, you know, actually, I forgot one question. Where is the MEPS around here? Yeah, so it's in Shreveport. Uh, Shreveport? So it is, yes. Um, so the location's up there. And that's uh, where we send our applicants to get processed. Yeah, the MEPS is the Military Entrance Processing Center. Uh, you go see it. doctors, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they still make them duck walk. And oh, <laughs> we do, we do, yes. oh, we do. Yes, no, yes, no. yeah. <laughs> Definitely, that has not changed. Well, uh, <laughs> Sergeant Rowe, Sergeant Cepeda, uh, I appreciate you guys coming in here. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we can have you back again. Yeah. And yeah, uh, we could talk about some specific jobs uh, right. that you just recently put somebody in first right time. yeah definitely definitely we appreciate it i appreciate you coming in thanks a lot and for everyone out there if you're interested in uh joining any of the military branches but the army is the best uh go ahead and um search your recruiter on google or uh stop on down uh in Deritter, they are right off the uh, main 171 uh right down there by uh, across the street from uh, uh the uh Big, oh, wait. No, they're down by uh, the, the restaurants and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. But anyways, uh, I'm Jeff uh, England from the Public Affairs Office. Please, if you like this sh uh, show, please leave a comment, uh, questions for the recruiters. I'll make sure that they, uh, they get them. Uh, be sure to like, share, and comment, and be sure to subscribe. And we will be watching and listening at you later. <laughs>